willkommen zurück auf dem Schiff und hier geht es sofort für euch weiter mit dem vollen Programm Heavy Metal. You played at the first day of the cruise and everyone talks about your show, that it was so great and strong. What was it like for you? Surprisingly, it was uh, very comfortable and uh, we loved the show and uh, it's not just courtesy, you know, it's not just me trying to be nice here. Funny thing is that I don't, I hardly catch any memories from the show. It was, it just went so fast and, and I'm trying to memorize it, I can't. But then, you know, I come across so many people, like for the last couple of days since we played and uh, a lot of people and a lot of friends from other bands, uh, they seem to be like really pleased with the show and they congratulated us. So all I can say, thank you so much. In general, uh, your show is bigger with yes. more elements. So it's different here for you. Well, I, I would love to bring pyros, you know, but I'm, I'm not sure if they would let us uh, <laughs> use fires on the boat. So um, we got like so much stage gear, you know, especially when we play in Europe because we are based in Europe. So uh, it's easier for us to escort like any of this because it's heavy and so on. So to escort this stuff, to transport things is, is so much easier over than in Europe. It was just bent and the energy that was emerging from the stage. As long as people are happy, that's, that's fine. Yeah, everyone talked about it, yeah, the next day. That's flattering. I mean, uh, we always do our best. Sometimes we fuck up, you know, sometimes it's, it goes smoother. This one was smoother. <laughs> What would you say is the perfect location for one of your shows? Is it the cruise? No, you said no, that it's, it's not. It's clubs. I appreciate like any circumstances, you know, and I really like to find myself in new challenging places like this one. And especially if I'm happy with the show, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe we should extend these barriers, you know, and maybe try some other places. I don't know if there's any shows uh, on the planes, but uh, if one day it happens, you know, I would like to be part of that. Um, did you ever play a concert without the corpse paint and the dress? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, fortunately, the, there was no, no one took even any pictures. It was Phoenix, Arizona. We were so rushed into the stage, you know, and... Uh, We played only like three or four songs, so I basically said right before the show, okay, you know what, let's treat it as a rehearsal. So there was maybe 50 people in the audience, and uh, like in the end of the night, there was like 3,000 people, dancing was headlining. So, uh, yeah, I mean, but, 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 but we never ever do that. Uh, there's no behemoth show without uh, all the entourage. We have our own vision, and we really dedicated to it, and uh, we never want to compromise, no. Does it change something in your head? Yes. It, something clicks, I don't know what. I mean, when I put my gear on, I even walk in a different way. Yeah. I talk differently, I walk, I just... It's, it's, it's Adam Darsky Deluxe. It's, it's whatever you call it, it's, it's there, you know? And I love to release it occasionally. So enjoy the show tonight and thanks. Thank you so much and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for having me here, yeah. <laughs> in a Bavarian accent before? No, no I was just joking though. I was trying. <laughs> Joke I know, again. I didn't know if it was working. Ah, das ist sehr lustig, ja? Das ist super geil. So, back to the cruise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tonight's your first gig on the cruise. So, uh, what did you do the last two days? It's a good question. I think we were resting most of the time because we were coming from Brazil. Um, so it was a long trip and um, You know, just really, before we came to the cruise, we were practicing uh, to do some older songs for the show. Um, but since we've been here, just relaxing. You know, we were in Miami for one day, just eating, doing a little shopping, walking around. And then on the boat, um, yesterday, just talking with friends, people we haven't seen in a long time. And uh, I was out after eating a little bit and just fell asleep. <laughs> so, uh, what do you expect of the gig tonight? I know, really a good time. I've been watching a few bands and watching people's reactions and talking to people about their experience from being on the cruise before and now. 
Um, and it all seemed very positive, you know. So it's great to see so many different people from around the world that have seen us in different uh, places around the world that are very excited uh, for the show tonight. So I think it's going to be great, you know, a really good time. I think it's a good combination, uh, the dark side of music and the blue sea and the sun. Yeah, it's, it seems to work, you know. <laughs> the black shirts don't fit that well with the sun, but, you know, we have no other choice. <laughs> it's getting hot inside. Yeah, it's great, you know. Uh, we've been so many different places and so many different countries, and this is the first time we play in Bahamas, at least at the waters of Bahamas, you know. So it's great. It's another new place for us, and we see people from everywhere, from Sri Lanka, from Honduras, from Peru, from from Europe in general, you know, so it's great. And it's uh, something special to have the closeness to the fans and the visitors, I think. How is it like? You have this open connection with the fans very close, which is one of the things uh, that I think draws to people, you know, it's very appealing for people to come on board is to have that uh, closeness with the bands that they admire, bands that they like. Andy, du bist der Veranstalter hier. Erste Batch to Hell. Wie sind die Leute drauf? Wo kommen die Leute so her? Die Leute sind wunderbar drauf. Ähm, kommen von der ganzen Welt. Wir haben insgesamt 43 Nationen an Bord. Es ist, ist wirklich sehr, 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 sehr international gestreut. Und alle haben eine Party. Es ist wunderbar. Wird es denn eine nächste Batch to Hell geben? Ähm, wir investieren nicht die ganze Zeit den ganzen Aufwand, um sowas aufzuziehen, dass es einmal und nie wieder kommt. Also es wird auf jeden Fall wieder eine Barge to Hell geben, ähm, most likely, also wird zu einem anderen Zeitraum, also äh, nächste Barge to Hell wird nicht mehr im Dezember sein, sondern wir müssen einen besseren Zeitraum finden. Lass uns mal diese, diese, diese Barge wieder schön nach Miami zurückbekommen und dann werden wir unsere Pläne machen. Es wird eine gewisse Vorlaufzeit geben, ähm, es wird also wahrscheinlich auch so sein, dass es im nächsten Jahr keine Barge geben wird, sondern dass es vielleicht ein Jahr irgendwie aussetzen wird. Aber wir werden auf jeden Fall unser Bestes geben, dass das nicht ein Once-in-a-Lifetime-Event war. Ja. Könntest du dir vorstellen, dass es vielleicht auch mal auf einen anderen Kontinent geht, Europa oder so? Ja, es gehen uns die Ziele aus, früher oder später. Wir haben auch da eine Idee, wie wir das umsetzen können und unsere, und unsere Kundschaft möglicherweise etwas zu involvieren. Wir haben noch ein paar andere Häfen. Es hat noch ein paar Inseln in der Karibik, die wir immer noch ansteuern können. Meine letzte Frage wäre jetzt noch, weil ich es ganz interessant finde, es ist ja, hat man ja sonst nicht so, dass es keinen Backstage-Bereich gibt. Die Leute sind auch VIP, beziehungsweise es gibt keine VIPs hier an Bord. Alles mischt sich. Es ist nicht so, dass es keinen VIP-Bereich gibt. Das ganze Schiff ist ein VIP-Bereich. Ich meine, wie, wie mehr VIP kann es sein, dass du irgendwie auf dem Schiff bist mit, äh, mit 40 oder noch mehr Bands? Und äh, ja, alle, alle teilen sich die gleichen Restaurants, die gleichen Bars, die gleichen Jacuzzis und so weiter. Es sind alle so freundlich und so. Und irgendwas. Ähm, ich kann es mir nur so erklären, irgendwas passiert in deinem Unterbewusstsein. Sobald du auf dieses Schiff gehst, ähm, merkst du irgendwie, wir sind alle auf dem gleichen Boot. Und dann entwickelt sich so ein gegenseitiger Respekt zwischen Fans und den Künstlern. Es ist, es ist, ist wunderbar. Also keiner, keiner fühlt sich irgendwie gestört. Alle haben eine Party zusammen. Und das ist irgendwie wirklich das, was ich glaube, dass das, ja, Barge to Hell und, und 70.000 Tons so, so speziell macht. Also es wird keine VIP-Behandlung geben. Wir sind alle VIPs. We're all the same. We're all metal. Sehr gut. Danke dir und ich freue mich schon auf die 70.000 Tons. <lacht> Vielen Dank, dass ich bei euch sein darf. Yeah! on this cruise. Everything is fucking awesome. The best fucking cruise ever, man. The stream metal. This is the cruise from the stream metal. That's not bullshit. Ich meine, wir sind auf den Bahamas gewesen. Wir sind hier mitten irgendwie auf dem Meer, auf dem Kreuzfahrtschiff. Die ganze Atmosphäre. Irgendwie ist es vollkommen surreal, durch dieses Luxusschiff zu laufen und dann irgendwie durch die Boxen Death Metal zu hören. Vor allen Dingen, also die ganze Atmosphäre ist mir eigentlich, war eigentlich mein ganzes Highlight. Der letzte Tag auf der Cruise. Was waren so eure Highlights? Hattet ihr da irgendwelche besonderen Erlebnisse oder so? Also unser Konzert-Highlight gestern Abend war Moonspell hier auf dem Pooldeck. 
in einem warmen Sommerwind, war wirklich traumhaft, war genial. Habt ihr da irgendwelche Bands kennengelernt oder so? Ja, ah, Meet and Greet mit Paradise Lost und Moonspell, das war natürlich auch einer meiner Highlights. Und äh, erst das tolle Konzert von Enslaved und dann stehen die plötzlich nach dem Konzert im Aufzug drin und wir so, wow, hey, Enslaved, cool. Und die, oh yeah. Und dann, nice show und der Aufzug geht wieder zu. Das sind auch Erlebnisse, die kriegt man nirgendwo anders mehr mit eigentlich. Ja. Dein musikalisches Highlight? Äh, Enslaved und Moonspell auf jeden Fall. Ich war absolut überragend. Großartig. Fernando from Moonspell, how do you like the cruise? I think I'm having, we're all having a lovely time. Uh, it's our second time, we did uh, 70,000 tons of metal a couple of years ago. So we were kind of already expecting um, a good mood. But I think on this uh, bar to hell, there's a great atmosphere, you know. Not only for the, for the shows, but everybody's um, getting along really well. It's nice to see friends as well from all the other bands, like whatever, from Napalm Death to Behemoths to Rotten Cry especially. When we asked around uh, the people which band they liked the most, you were always part of it. So do you notice that? Well, I bought a lot of people beers, so they yeah. could, uh, you know, and cocktails, so they could say that. I don't know, I mean, uh, playing for Moonspell is something very special. Obviously, here, uh, the context is totally different. People are here more to be entertained. There's a lot of bands, there's a lot of things, um, you know, that can distract your attention from the shows. But um, we leave the, the boat with a definitely a full heart, because... Uh, people, especially after the pool gig, which is more vibrant and more social and people are around more. Um, I had to handshake, you know, like already dozens of people taking, taking pictures. So they're showing us their love. So I think we can complain, definitely not. So you like it that the people are all around you? Yeah, of course. I, I was never into, you know, hiding backstage or having a, a suite just for myself. I think uh, we're from Portugal, so we are um, social. Obviously, we have our own way of socializing. We don't run around naked and drunk, like probably the Scandinavian. Uh, we are more laid back, but um, yeah, we, we get along. I mean, when you are a singer or when you are in the band, if you don't like people, it's kind of contradictory because um, it's, a, it's a job and a mission that evolves dealing with people um, every day. So everybody has been very nice so um, I'm not against this no backstage policy sometimes you know you are backstage and you are there bored and then you start playing I don't know pro evolution soccer or doing something bad like that but here it's um, it's cool because uh, you you get to play and you get to uh, meet people face to face and um, with Moonspell um, it has always been like this we were never hiding backstage you know playing the vampire <laughs> no. We come out at night. I mean, yesterday I went to bed at 9.30. Oh. Yeah, okay. so... Uh, why? Why not? <laughs> we just felt like um, celebrating. So we hit the karaoke. And our bass player is from Venezuela. So we did some salsa songs. And all of a sudden, everybody was dancing salsa in the dance floor. Yeah. So... And when you notice it, it was already 9.30. So last smoke in bed. Yeah. Do you have a favorite song which we would not expect because it's really other kind of music? Plenty, yeah. I mean, um, of course, my roots and my influence is definitely heavy metal and gothic. But um, like one of my favorite songs, it's um, The Miracle of Love by Swans. I don't know if you know this band, Michael Girard. I'm really into this uh, darker wave, alternative stuff. I don't know if it's very surprising, but I also like Living La Vida Loca, Ricky yeah. Martin. That's a killer song yeah. as well. Yeah. Good. good for the boat. Yeah. Good for karaoke. Maybe tonight. Welcome to Miami. Wir sind wieder zurück im Hafen von Miami, Florida. Die Batch 2012 ist zu Ende. Hinter mir wird gerade die Bühne abgebaut und ich muss sagen, es waren vier ganz schön harte Tage und Nächte. 
Und ja, wir sehen uns in ein paar Wochen schon wieder bei der 70.000 Tons of Metal, auch hier auf dem Schiff. Bis dann.